What democracy means to me is uh, a coming together of all of the people to make decisions collectively about the future. Craft and art are core to the democracy that we have here in the United States. The Constitution itself references the arts as something that can be funded by the United States Congress. In Article 1, Section 8, it says that the Congress shall have the power to promote the progress of the useful arts. So right there in the beginning, of our country, our references to what makers do and what makers have a right to, uh, to be protected for. Crafts were essential for the first colonists. They developed cabinetry and joinery, metal making, and all of the things that allowed those first colonies to survive. And you see that there was always, in these objects of use, this yearning to make them beautiful. Ben Franklin grew up as a candle maker until he was apprenticed as a printmaker. And that's what led him to be able to invent the Franklin stove. He was a maker. In 1890, the Boston Arts Commission, the very first public arts entity in America, comes into being. The first local arts agency came out of World War II. The returning veterans who wanted to see art happening in their own communities. It began in Quincy, Illinois. Well, now there's about 5,000 of those local arts agencies. Americans for the Arts is set up to be the national organization supporting all of the arts in the lives of all of the people. We've done a lot of work on art therapy, and this is humanities therapy. At our headquarters, we work to keep the dollars rising public dollars and also private sector dollars for art and craft in America. Americans for the Arts is based in Washington, D.C. because this is where the political decision-making is done for federal support for the arts. And also, it is an inspirational place uh, with things like the Lincoln Memorial and all of the monuments that we have here. Each monument has a piece of who we are embedded in it. Some beautiful and some haunting. The Korean War Memorial for me is a haunting memorial. You see the incredible price paid for democracy. The Washington Monument was being built and they ran out of money. So they stopped it a little less than halfway up. A number of years later, citizen activist groups got together and raised money to finish it. But if you look at the monument closely, you can see the demarcation line between where the first effort stopped and where the rest of it goes on. We have great museums here in Washington, like the Smithsonian. Those institutions depend on government investment from the window of Americans for the Arts, uh, I get the sense of the history of this place. Uh, Abraham Lincoln used to come right down Vermont Avenue to the White House, and Lincoln, in the middle of the Civil War, called for the finishing of the dome of the Capitol and expending all that money on craftsmanship to create a symbol that the Union would continue. And you look up, you'll see some of the most beautiful crafted design work on the domed ceiling of the Capitol building. Advocacy simply means from the Latin to voice. In a participatory democracy, in my opinion, it's a citizen obligation to uh, understand what you value for your, yourself, your family, your community, and to talk with your elected decision makers because you've got some ideas we do a study every four years of the economic impact of the nonprofit arts organizations. It's about $64 billion. And then if you add in simply what audiences spend, the economic impact is about $166 billion. Now that's a bigger figure than anybody knows, and we take that to Congress and they love it. 
I think you'll find that each individual invited to testify today will make a compelling case for why the arts is a great investment for our economy and for our citizenry. I will bring artists to talk to the decision makers. The fact that you guys have to sit around and, and have people beg you for money all day, I don't know if I, I want to be in your shoes. <laughs> you don't get resources unless you ask for them. Yeah, I'm here because, like with everybody else, I, I feel that the arts are a very, very solid investment. And I'm, I'm here to say that I, as much as we appreciate the, the 144 um, that's there and, and what increase could come, in my opinion, we need... Uh, 500 million. I am here because I am living, breathing proof of how the data you've heard and the statistics you've read really exist. With proper funding, the NEA has the power to transform and transport a little girl from the Bronx to Broadway, to Sundance, to Hollywood, to the Hill and beyond. I'd love to see everybody in our country be a maker, to engage with something beautiful and understand the world in a different way because of that um, is, uh, I, I think, at the end of the day, the real power of the arts.